other maritime commandos operated for the Office of Strategic Services, precursor of the CIA. Their missions included infiltration behind enemy lines and sabotage. Of all the forefathers of the SEAL teams, the covert OSS maritime unit pushed the limits of technology. I mean, they started from scratch. Uh, they were down at the Washington Yacht Club for a while, then they went out to the Potomac River. They had a, a training site there, but uh, there was a young medical school student named Christian Lambertson from the University of Pennsylvania. He invented an underwater rebreathing device, which didn't leave any bubbles. It allowed you to swim underwater and not leave any telltale bubbles. He originally tested it for the Navy, ironically, out at the um, swimming pool at the Naval Academy, and they passed on it. So he approached the OSS, who were interested in it for its maritime unit, and the Omni Shoreham had the uh, city's largest pool. So on November 18th, 1942, Lambertson and Jack Taylor, Lieutenant Jack Taylor of the U.S. Navy, who's widely regarded as the first SEAL, tested it for the OSS where we're sitting today. So in many respects, I think of this room as sort of being the most uh, historic room in the history of uh, Naval Special Warfare, the birthplace of the Navy SEALs. Uh, we're very proud to uh, be the place where that occurred. Um, uh, it was underwater breathing equipment that later uh, developed into what we know as scuba gear um, and, uh, and by a group that uh, became the Navy SEALs. And uh, I think everyone knows how important that equipment and that group of people are in, in, to our nation's history. And uh, we're proud to be associated with them and, 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 and that. Obviously the Navy SEALs are, are uh, world class in, in what they do. And, um, you know, uh, I don't know that I can articulate any better that just knowing that that started here is uh, we're very proud of it.